Okay, so we're looking at Gaussian elimination here, and Gaussian elimination is just a really robust way to solve systems of linear equations. You've solved systems of linear equations before. For instance, if you were trying to solve this system of linear equations, you might use the elimination method. You might subtract 1 from the other. So 2x minus 2x is 0x, 4y minus 3y is y, and 9 minus 5 is 4. Now that you know that y equals 4, you could sub y equals 4 back into there and find out what x is. So that's all well and good if you've got two equations and two variables, but what if you had more than that? So that's where Gaussian elimination comes into the picture. So a question like this, uh, and we're going to put this into a matrix. Now everything that we're doing, we could actually do it without a matrix, but we do it all in a matrix because it just makes it nice and neat and easy. We put it into a special kind of matrix, and that special kind of matrix is called an augmented matrix. So rather than trying to like give you a definition of an augmented matrix, I'm just going to draw it for you. It's going to make a lot of sense. So we look at our first equation right here, and we go 3, 6, negative 5. We put a line here like this, and we put our solution 0. And we do that for all the other ones as well. And don't forget to close it up. All right, so we have a matrix in brackets with a line. These are the solutions. These are the equations x, y, and z. And then we just start manipulating this to solve it. Now, when it comes to Gaussian elimination, you're allowed to do whatever you want as long as you follow three rules. First rule, you're allowed to swap rows. So I could write this like this, this like this. I can move this to here. I can swap those rows around. You can multiply a row. So this row, 3, 6, negative 5, 0, I can multiply it by 2 and make it 6, 12, negative 10, 0. I could multiply this by negative 5 if I wanted to. It would be negative 5, negative 5, negative 10, and negative 45. I can multiply a row. And finally, we can subtract a multiple of a row from another row. And we're going to do that so much that I'm going to show you that when we're working over here. Now, what's the goal? Now, the goal is to get down to a matrix that looks like this. A bunch of zeros here below what we call the leading diagonal in blue, and all of these x's just represent numbers. Now, some people think the goal is one step further, and for all of these blue bits here to be the number one. One, one, one. That's called row echelon form. But for the purposes of what we're trying to do, solve that uh, system of equations. We don't need them to all be ones. So just numbers and zeros below the leading diagonal. That's the goal. So let's start operating. Now, for reasons that will soon become clear, my first operation on this particular one is to swap rows. Now, you don't always have to swap rows. Very rarely do you have to swap rows, but I'm going to swap rows on this one. I'm going to sw swap row one and row three. Okay, so you can see now that I've done my swap. This entire row has gone up to the top, and this entire row has gone to the bottom. Okay, now, rarely do you have to do that swap, but this next step is where the game really starts. Now, what you're trying to do is turn this into a zero, and turn this into a zero. And the best way, the way to turn that into a zero and that into a zero, is to use this rule here. Subtract a multiple of a row from another row. And we're gonna subtract a multiple of the first row from this second row. And we're gonna subtract a multiple of the first row from the third row. Okay, so let's get ourselves set up. Okay, I'm set. Row one doesn't change. Now, what multiple of row one do I need to subtract from row two? If I were to take row 1 and multiply it by 2, that is 2, 2, 4, 18, and subtract that from row 2, that would have the effect of destroying this 2, making this 2, 0. Now, there's a particular kind of notation that we use for this. Row 2, and we're going to make turn row 2 into a new row, and the way that we're creating it is by... Uh, doing row 2 minus 2 times row 1. Okay, so 2 minus 2 times row 1. 2 times row 1 is 
2. Okay, so 2 minus 2 is 0. Okay, what's our next one? 4 minus 2 times row 1 is 4 minus 2, which is 2. Negative 3 minus 2 times 2 is negative 3 minus 4, which is 7. And 1 minus 2 times 9, which is 18. 1 minus 18 is negative 17. You can see that Gaussian elimination, it's straightforward. It's just subtraction and multiplication. But you're going to do so many of them that it's going to be easy to make a mistake. In fact, there's a mistake. We did negative 3 minus negative minus 4. Negative 3 minus 4 should be negative 7. Okay, you can see how easy it is. How easy it is to make a mistake, I mean. Okay, we're going to do the same sort of operation on row 3 here to get rid of this 3. So, row 3, we're going to transform it by doing row 3 minus some multiple of row 1. What multiple of row 1 do we need to subtract from this? We need to subtract 3 times row 1. Alright, let's see if I can do a better job of this. 3 minus 3 times 1 is 3 minus 3, which is 0. And that's the goal. So we've achieved our objective of making two zeros there. 6 minus 3 times 1. 6 minus 3 is 3. Negative 5 minus... 3 times 2, 6. Negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. And then we have 0 minus um, 3 times 9, which is 27. So minus 27. Okay. And we've achieved our objective. If you look back at our goal here, we were trying to get a 0 here, a 0 here, and finally we want to get a 0 there. All right, so I've done our matrix here again. Row 1 and row 2 aren't going to change in this operation. Row 3 is the goal because we need to change this 3 into a 0. Now, you might be thinking, well, we're going to do the same thing again, and we are. Um, subtract a multiple of a row from another row. And you might be thinking, well, we'll just jump to row 1 again, and we'll subtract a multiple of that. It never works because if you subtract a multiple of row 1 from this row here, you end up ruining the good work you've done with that 0. So instead of subtracting a multiple of row 1, subtract a multiple of row 2. All right, so row 3, we're going to transform that by doing row 3 minus some multiple of row 2. Okay, what do I need to multiply row 2 by to um, cancel out that 3? Okay, it's pretty ugly. I need to multiply it by 1.5. 2 times 1.5 is 3. So multiplying it by 1.5 or 3 over 2 are uh, 2. Ew. Okay, so how am I going to do this? So the 0 doesn't change. 2 times 1.5 is 3, because that's why I chose 1.5. So 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay. Uh, negative 7 times 3 times 1.5 is uh, 10.5. So negative 11 minus minus 10.5. That's negative 11 plus 10.5, uh, which is negative a half. Okay, and then I have negative 17 times 3 on 2. All right, don't trust myself, so I'm going to write it out. Negative 27 minus 3 on 2 times negative 27. All right, equals negative 3 on 2. All right, now that's not the only way you could have done all of this. An alternative method would have been to use this rule here, multiply rows, you could have taken row 2 and row 3 and multiplied them by 2 and 3 respectively, like that. So row 2 is 3 times row 2 now. So you can see 2 times 3 is 6, negative 7 times 3 is negative 21, negative 17 times 3 is negative 51, and row 3 is 2 times row 3, and then this, this, and this. Why multiply by 2 and 3? 
because it makes these equal to each other and then you can subtract row two from row three to uh, get rid of this value here okay like that so what's happened here is we've subtracted row two from row three and we get something that looks like that now this alternative is a little nicer because we avoided some fractional stuff uh, but I think using this method here is a little more like formulaic you won't get too lost in it because here all we did was say I'm going to get rid of this and this by subtracting some multiple of row one and then I want to get rid of this by subtracting some multiple of row two but I guess the real lesson here is if you follow these rules you can do whatever you like as long as you follow all of those rules Okay, so forgetting about the alternative method for a second, we've got what we've come for. We've reached our goal, this is zero, zero, zero. Now we really jump back into the world of algebra that we're very familiar with, and we just start solving those simultaneous equations. So this bottom row can actually be translated back into an equation. What it says is negative one half z equals negative three on two and then when we solve that we get z equals if i multiply that side or both sides by negative a half i'll get uh, positive three all right so solving that we know now that z equals three now this line here can be rewritten as two y minus 7z equals negative 17. But we know what z is. We just solved z. z is 3. And so solving that equation, we get y equals 2. And finally, we can look at this equation and rewrite it as 1x plus 1y plus 2z equals 9. And of course, we know that y equals 2, and we know that z equals 3. So x plus 2 plus 2 times 3 equals 9. And solving that equation, straightforward, x equals 1. So our final solution x equals 1, y equals 2, and z equals 3. Now, what is that solution, this thing, what does it mean? Simultaneous equations. Looking at our simultaneous equations, it means that if we sub 1, 2, and 3 in for x, y, and z into each of those equations, they'll be true. 3 times 1 plus 6 times 2 minus 5 times 3 equals 0. That's true. And it's true for the next one, and it's true for the next one. Which, of course, means that if you're given a question like that, and then you go through this painstaking Gaussian elimination process and get a solution, you can always check your solution by putting it back in there. All right, that is Gaussian elimination.